led through the mist by the milk. Today, we bring you a cartoon series named Over the Garden Wall from beginning to end. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The series follows the adventures of two half brothers, Wirt and Greg, who find themselves lost in a strange, surreal forest called the Unknown while trying to find their way back home. Throughout their journey, Wirt and Greg encounter a variety of strange and whimsical creatures, including a talking bluebird named Beatrice, a lovelorn woodsman, and a school of singing animals. Animals. They also face a number of challenges and obstacles, such as a villainous creature called the Beast. As they travel deeper into the unknown, Wirt and Greg gradually uncover the secrets of the forest and confront their own fears and insecurities. In the end, they must use their wits and bravery to outsmart the Beast and find their way back home. So, what exactly is the unknown? Well, although the show itself doesn't blatantly put out what the place really is, the events of the show hint that it might be a place where people go when they die. One can also deduce that the unknown is a shared place for the souls, and that's why we see all the characters interacting with each other. On the very first watch of this show, I breezed past the opening scenes as they only seemed like a mesh of visuals to me. But it was on the second watch that I realized that every single scene in the show is there on purpose. The girl in the blue dress is Beatrice alongside her dog, the ostriches and the cat bringing the pumpkins are the characters in Potts Field, the gorilla performing in the circus is Jimmy, the figurines on the shelf are a reference to the toy maker, and honestly, the list just goes on and on. This just shows how the creators of the show gave every single scene a thought. Alright, anyways, that's enough of my rambling. How about we get right into the episodes? From the very beginning, Beatrice is shown spying on the boys as they wander about in the woods. In this episode, Greg and Wirt run into the woodsmen whose initial words spook them even more than they already were. Welcome to the unknown, boys. You're more lost than you realize. He takes them to a mill that he claims to have been abandoned, which begs the question, who was the previous owners of the mill? One theory that I came across was that this house belonged to Beatrice and her family, and the visuals that support this theory are the bird figurines on the shelf. Not only that, but also, when they get attacked by the dog, it turns out to be the dog in the very first frame of the show who's sitting beside Beatrice. Anyways, so what happens in this episode is that the brothers find the woodsman who takes them to the mill. Greg leaves a trail of candies on the way and the dog follows it and locates the boys. He attacks them which results in the destruction of the mill and the woodsman asks them to head out as they're only causing him problems. <laughs> Episode 2 Episode 2 really uncorks the desperation behind Beatrice's intentions. The whole time, she's trying her best to take the boys to Adelaide and some people suggest that she purposely put herself in the bush so it would give her a reason to stick with the boys. As they all head to Potts Field, they encounter the ostriches we see in the opening scene, followed by a group of pumpkin heads celebrating a harvest. When they enter the celebration, a girl tells Wirt that he's not ready to join them yet, which makes a lot more sense later when they find out that they're all skeletons dressed as pumpkins, which implies that Greg and Wirt are not yet dead. This raises another question though. If they aren't dead, what are they doing inside the unknown? Well, for that answer, you're gonna have to stick around. <laughs> One more thing that came into my mind was that if all the pumpkins are skeletons, what is their leader, Enoch? Well, in the last few visuals of the show, we learned that Enoch is a cat. Even in the opening scenes, we saw a black cat driving a carriage full of pumpkins, so what could it be? Well, one theory is that the unknown gives home to a shared consciousness, where every being gets to have whatever their imagination desires. And for a cat to think of skeletons wearing pumpkins on its head, maybe that's not so unbelievable. Now. One interesting fact that I learned about Pottsfield from Wikipedia is that it's a place for the burial of unknown, unclaimed, or indigent people. That would explain the skeletons that were dug during the episode. In short, the people just wanted them to dig up new members for their party as they celebrate the New Year's harvest. Episode 3 This episode further shows Beatrice's desperation as she's getting impatient to lead the boys to Adelaide, and she even asks Wirt to quickly tie his laces so that they can move on. This subtle detail left no impression on 
on me the first time, but it makes a lot more sense when you already know what she's plotting. They come across a school that Wirt purposely attends just to stall time and annoy her, while Greg runs away at the sight of it. As Wirt attends the class full of animals, Greg is attacked by a gorilla and runs inside the classroom to avoid it. Here, they all sing a song with the animals playing instruments until the father walks in, who appears to be a big intimidating evil man. He snatches all their instruments, but later we see him take off his disguise, which reveals that he's a small and miserable man who is only putting on a strong front. He plans to sell the instruments to continue running the school, but Greg steals them and holds a concert which accumulates a ton of money, and it also gives the owner a new perspective on life. One more thing about this episode is the gorilla we saw in the opening scene. That gorilla was Jimmy, the school teacher's lover who suddenly disappeared. Even his picture can be seen on the shelf during the song. He says he went to a circus to earn some money for the wedding ring, but he got stuck in the costume and people started running away from him thinking he's a real gorilla. Anyways, remember how Wirt was tying his shoelaces at the start of the episode and Beatrice didn't let him do it because it was too time consuming? Well, he trips on the gorilla because of that, which causes his head to loosen up, revealing Jimmy from the inside. I gotta say, that's a pretty neat detail if you ask me. Oh, and also, it is at this point when Beatrice has had a change of heart and actually starts caring about the boys, if only a little. <laughs> Episode 4 so, episode 4 starts off with the group hiding in hay on top of a carriage and, oh, uh, Greg has a duck now. The driver drops them off at a tavern and immediately we see the highwayman looming around them from the window. For those of you who don't know, a highwayman is a person who robs travelers, and they would almost always be with a horse companion. This proposes the theory that Fred is the highwayman's horse, especially when in episode 5, all Fred wants to do is steal from Endicott. This episode is really strange as honestly nothing made much sense to me. Everyone in the tavern is addressed by a title or a profession such as the butcher, the baker, or the midwife, except our protagonist who is just Wirt. Well, not until everyone starts calling him the Pilgrim. A traveler in the tavern kept telling him this. He who carries the dark lantern must be the beast. What? No, the woodsman's a good guy. The locals imply that the woodsman is the real beast, which is kind of true as later in the show we learn that he is the one keeping the beast alive by keeping the lantern aflame. Meanwhile, Beatrice gets kicked out and tries to get some information from Fred, who doesn't seem to know cognitive speech. She hears the woodsman chopping edelwood wood and decides to pay him a visit and her scream can be heard inside the tavern. As Wirt rides Fred to rescue her, there is a lot of detail in the upcoming sequence. So, he finds Beatrice lying unconscious next to an Edelwood tree, the same one the brothers saw when they first encountered the woodsman. As usual, they find the woodsman with an axe next to him, prompting Wirt to say this. You were the beast all along. One more thing that is very neat in this show is that Wirt blows on his lantern to defeat the woodsman and rescue Beatrice, something we will see again very soon. Woodsman. After burning the tree, the gang escapes the woodsman and Beatrice says how she got knocked out after hitting a tree. So basically the woodsman had no part to play in her going unconscious. In fact, he might have been the one who picked her up and placed her on the tree so she didn't get stepped on. Anyways, Beatrice is still worried about directions, and the funny thing that happens here is that, well, remember Fred who couldn't talk? Yeah, so he could talk all this time, and since he's been around the place for years, he knows the place far too well. It is now that we learn more about the woodsman. We can also see an abstract figure inside the lantern here which, according to the beast, is the woodsman's daughter's soul. His job is to keep the flame lit to keep her alive, and that explains why he's always in search of the Edelwood. He's also protective of the children and demands the beast to leave them alone. <laughs> episode 5 Alright, so Episode 5 is very interesting. The group visits a self-obsessed and filthy rich man named Quincy Endicott. Beatrice says that they need two gold coins to ride the boat to Adelaide and introduces the brothers as Endicott's nephews to get some money out of him. 
The episode builds itself in such a high detailed way as Endicott says this. I sometimes don't even know where or who I am. <laughs> this indicates that Endicott might suffer from personality disorders and maybe that loneliness has driven him insane. Later, Endicott suddenly starts sweating and mentions how one day he stumbled upon a part of his mansion that he hadn't even built. He recalls seeing a painting of a beautiful woman and mentions how he started seeing the ghost of her from there on out. He even fell in love with the woman. Greg urges him to show him the painting where they come across the woman and turns out that she's a human and thought that Endicott was a ghost haunting her mansion. See, their mansion was so big that they were intertwined and they both had the same business making them each other's competitors. Meanwhile, Wirt and Beatrice spend a lot of time together and share their secrets with each other. It's at this point that she really starts caring about the boys. Nonetheless, Greg receives two gold coins that they need for their trip, but he throws them into the fountain because he's stupid. Honestly, there's no other explanation for that. Episode 6 the group sneaks onto the boat without paying, and we see the guards chasing them around until they put on a frog costume and play in the band. We learned in the previous episode that Wirt plays clarinet and is asked to play a similar instrument, which is the bassoon. This part is very poetic, as Wirt is always shown to be the insecure type who would settle for whatever he has because getting out of that bubble can risk him losing whatever good he already has. So playing a different instrument in front of a whole crowd reflects just how much he needs to sometimes get out of his comfort zone to achieve happiness in life. That, or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Nonetheless, the group finds their way to Adelaide, and it's revealed that she's a witch working for the Beast and luring people in to be turned into Edelwood. The witch possesses magic scissors, which she can use to turn Beatrice's family back into humans in exchange for sacrifices. However, since Beatrice had a change of heart about the kids, she offers herself instead to save her family. In a quick turn of events, Greg and Wirt find themselves restrained by the witch, and before Beatrice could explain herself, the brothers escape. This show encapsulates a beautiful moment of human emotion as Wirt had only just confided in Beatrice with his secrets, but gets betrayed by her which changes his view on life entirely. His misery can be seen in the next episodes as he loses all hope about ever leaving this place. Episode 7 Episode 7 begins with another encounter with the woodsman who asks the boys to keep high spirits and to not lose hope, almost as if the beast feasts on the hopelessness of the people. This was the absolute perfect time to reveal that part because, as I mentioned earlier, Wirt is slowly showing signs of hopelessness, which gives us a foresight that he might be captured by the beast. The boys enter a creepy mansion with a woman named Lorna and her Auntie Whispers, and the ant uses some magic bell to command Lorna. Auntie Whispers is portrayed as the evil enslaving witch, while Lorna is shown to be a sweet soul. But we quickly learn that Lorna is the real evil, while Auntie Whispers is only trying to keep her in check using the bell. The boys steal the bell and use it to cast the evil spirit away, which begs the question, why did Auntie Whispers not think of that? Maybe she wanted to enslave Lorna to do her chores, or maybe she was just that dumb. One other thing that I fail to understand is why the writers felt the need to warn the boys of Adelaide after they've escaped her hut. If they had done so in the previous episode, there would have been some lingering doubts and tension between Wirt and Beatrice, but why reveal that now? Go on and let us know in the comments if you have any ideas. Episode 8 Oh boy, this one right here is surely the goofiest episode with a ton of abstracts. Wirt has no will left to do anything after getting betrayed and asks Greg to do whatever he wants while he just naps under a tree. Here, we get to see the world from Greg's perspective, who dreams about a flying city where he rescues the inhabitants from evil clouds and is then offered a wish by the queen of the city. One theory that I stumbled across is that the queen is the beast in disguise to give a false sense of security to Greg. When he wishes for a way back home for both him and Wirt, the queen tells him Wirt is already captured by the beast. Let's go get Wirt. I'm sorry, Gregory, but Wirt cannot go with you. He is too lost. See how the Edelwood grows around him? The beast has claimed him all.
but we see him easily break free when he wakes up. One more thing that supports this theory is that Greg makes a deal with the Beast in the next episodes, which proposes that the Queen was the Beast all along and manipulated him into being captured. I gotta say guys, that's some pretty dark stuff if you ask me. <laughs> episode 9 This episode addresses the biggest question that was proposed in the very first scene of the very first episode, which is, how did the boys end up here? It gives us a flashback of Wirt making a tape of poetry and clarinet, which addresses his feelings towards his crush Sarah. It also answers a lot of questions, such as why Greg has a kettle on his head, See my trunk? And how did he have an abundance of candy in his pockets? I was helping old lady Daniels rake some leaves in exchange for candy. It even addresses the fact rock that he keeps pulling out throughout the series. Another thing that I noticed while re-watching the show was that Wirt has a poster of the black turtle on his wall, which we've seen multiple times in the unknown. The brothers follow Sarah and her friends into a graveyard called the Eternal Garden, which is where we see Greg hiding behind Endicott's grave, which again supports the theory that the unknown is the place where people go when they die. Also, the name of the show now makes a lot more sense as the brothers jump over the wall of the graveyard named the Eternal Garden. Episode 10 Alright, we've made it now to the final episode. The brothers find themselves on a train track and roll down the hill into a lake, all to avoid death. It's also revealed that the Edelwood is grown on lost souls, which have been claimed by the beast and the woodsman is unknowingly harvesting them to keep the lantern lit. This episode addresses Wirt's fears, and he finally takes a stand for his brother, whom he had abandoned in the previous episode. The woodsman also learns that the lantern does not hold his daughter's soul, it in fact holds the beast's soul. The beast is evil and manipulative, and offers Wirt to be the next lantern bearer if he wants to keep his brother alive, but he steps up to him and rescues his brother. Almost as if the whole story is based on Word addressing his insecurities and stepping up to take a stand for himself. So, in short, the brothers went out on Halloween where they got pranked by a policeman and jumped over the garden wall to avoid him. They found themselves on top of a train track and had to roll down the hill to avoid getting hit. The brothers rolled down into a lake where they both had a brief moment of unconsciousness and visited the land of the dead in a dream. All of the events of the unknown happened in those few seconds when Wirt was drowning, which made him address his fears and come out a much better version of himself. He wakes up from his slumber and rescues his brother, until finally getting found by his friends and the policemen who take them to the hospital. When Wirt wakes up, he finally sums up enough courage to address his feelings for Sarah, something he was unable to do before this incident. This show is so goofy and dark from the get-go, and guys, I absolutely adore it. Having the constant lingering mystery of what, how, and when throughout the entire show made it so much more enjoyable. The narrative, the writing, the art style, the choice of music and voice acting, oh, the attention to detail, everything was so mature and sophisticated which honestly surprises me because this is a show which was meant to be for kids. The best part about the show is definitely Wirt's character development which is so subtle and realistic that one feels so relatable and attached to him. Honestly, it's so hard to sum up this show in a one-liner because no one line can do justice to this spectacular masterpiece. But uh, it basically tells you to never give up and that you can do anything if you set your mind to it. Alright guys, that's gonna be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, go on and leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more similar content. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.